Chapter 14, The Sectional Crisis Animosity between the North and the South reached critical proportions by the 1850s, but a civil war was averted for another decade. The Compromise of 1850 In the 1840s, the North and the South differed violently over whether slavery should be allowed to extend into the territories. Professional politicians, however, successfully mediated the conflict. The Problem of Slavery in the Mexican Secession Traditionally, slavery had been kept out of American politics, with the result that no practical program could be devised for the elimination in the southern states. Congress, however, had the power to set the conditions under which territories became states and to forbid slavery in the new states. In the 1840s, as a result of expansion, Congress faced the problem of determining the status of slavery in the territories taken from Mexico. The Wilmot Proviso launches the Free Soil Movement. As soon as the United States declared war against Mexico, anti-slavery groups wanted to make sure that, the slavery, that slavery would not expand because of American victory. David Wilmot introduced a bill in Congress that would have banned all African Americans, slave or free, from whatever land the United States took from Mexico, thus preserving the area for white small farmers. This blend of racism and anti-slavery won great support in the North, and in a clearly sectional division, the House of Representatives passed the proviso, while the Senate defeated it. The battle over the proviso foreshadowed an even more urgent controversy once the peace treaty with Mexico was signed. Squatter Sovereignty and the Election of 1848 the issue of slavery in the Mexican sessions became an issue in the 1848 election. Democratic presidential candidate Louis Cass offered a clever solution. He proposed that Congress allow the settlers in the territories to decide the issue, better known as popular sovereignty. The proposal found support among anti-slavery forces who assumed that the territorial settlers would have a chance to prohibit slavery before it could get established. Popular sovereignty, however, was unacceptable to those who wanted a definite limit placed on the expansion of slavery. The Free Soil Party was formed and it ran Martin Van Buren for president. The Whigs nominated war hero Zachary Taylor who took no stand on territorial question and who won with less than a uh, half of the popular vote. Taylor takes charge. Taylor proposed to settle the controversy by admitting California and New Mexico as states right away, even though New Mexico had too few people in it to be a state. The white South reacted angrily. Planters objected that they had not yet had time to settle the new territories, which would certainly ban slavery if they immediately became states. A convention of southern states was called to meet in Nashville, perhaps to declare secession, forging a compromise. The Whig leader Henry Clay put together a compromise package. The North would get California as a free state and the prohibition on slavery trade would be in the District of Columbia. The South got a strong fugitive slave law and a chance to settle the New Mexico Territory, which was also enlarged. When Taylor, who opposed the compromise, died in August of 1850, the Democrats, led by Stephen Douglas, adopted each of Clay's proposal as separate measures and changed them slightly. The Democrats, for example, extended popular sovereignty into the Utah Territory also. No single bill was backed by the majority of both northern or southern congressmen, but a combination of northern Democrats and southern Whigs passed each separate measure. The South accepted the Compromise of 1850 as conclusive and backed away from the threats of secession.
In the North, the Democratic Party gained popularity by taking credit for the Compromise, and the Whigs found it necessary to cease their criticism of it. Political Upheaval, 1852-1856 to The sectional dispute aroused by the controversy over slavery in the new territories had been successfully handled by the Whigs and Democrats. In the 1850s, these parties collapsed as the sectional struggle raged without restraint. The party system in crisis. Once the Compromise of 1850 seemed to have settled the territorial controversy, Whigs and Democrats looked for new issues. The Democrats claimed credit for the nation's prosperity and promised to defend the Compromise. Whigs, however, could find no popular issue and began to fight among themselves. Their candidate in 1852, Winfield Scott, lost in a landslide to Democrat Franklin Pierce. The Kansas-Nebraska Act rises a storm. In 1854, Stephen Douglas introduced a bill to organize the Kansas and Nebraska territories. These areas were north of the Missouri Compromise Line and had been off-limits to slavery since 1820, but Douglas proposed to apply popular sovereignty to them in an effort to get southern votes and avoid another controversy over the territories. Douglas expected to revive the spirit of manifest destiny for the benefit of the Democratic Party and for his own benefit, when he ran for president in 1860. The South insisted and Douglas agreed to add an explicit explicit repeal of the Missouri Compromise to the Kansas-Nebraska Act thus provoking a storm of protest in the North where it was felt that the South had broken a long-established agreement. The Whig Party, unable to decide what position to take on the Kansas-Nebraska Act, disintegrated. The Democratic Party suffered mass defections in the North. In the the congressional elections of 1854, coalitions of anti-Nebraska candidates swept the North, and the Democrats became virtually the only political party in the South. In the midst of this uproar, President Pierce made an effort to buy or seize Cuba from Spain, but northern anger of any further extension of slavery forced the, the President to drop the idea. An Appeal to Nativism, the Know-Nothing Episode As the Whigs collapsed, a new party, the Know-Nothings, or the American Party, gained in popularity. The Know-Nothing Party especially appealed to the evangelical Protestants who objected to the millions of Catholics immigrating to America. By the 1850s, the Know-Nothings also picked up support from former Whigs and Democrats disgusted with politics as usual. In 1854, the American Party suddenly took political control of Massachusetts and spread rapidly across the nation. In less than two years, the Know-Nothings collapsed, for reasons that are still obscure. Most probably, Northerners worried less about immigration as it slowed down and turned their attention to the slavery issue. Kansas and the Rise of the Republicans The Republican Party emerged as a coalition of former Whigs, Know-Nothings, Free Soilers, and Democrats by emphasizing the sectional struggle and by appealing strictly to the Northern voters. Republicans promised to save the West as a preserve for white small farmers. Events in Kansas helped the Republicans. Abolitionist and pro-slavery forces raced into the territory to gain control of the territorial territorial legislature. Pro-slavery forces won and passed laws that made it illegal to even criticize the institution 